What is up, YouTube? Ruby here today. I'm going to show you guys the IBM ThinkPad X41. So, uh, this is a, a computer that this is actually a laptop that I got. Uh, one of the two laptops I got at the uh, junkyard uh, recently. Uh, back in uh, April, actually, earlier uh, in April. So, uh, without further ado, uh, let's talk about it so the x41 is basically uh one of the smaller laptops uh on the ibm thinkpad lineup there are two versions of the x41 you got this one uh, the regular uh, standard laptop and the x41 tablet which is basically a, a tablet version of the x41 with uh, some buttons on the screen so uh it is pretty much one of the earliest two-in-ones at the time, so uh, there you go. And then uh, also uh, with the X series, you also had uh, some of the other ones. Uh, 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 the other iteration with a tablet would be the X61, which is from Lenovo, and the X61 had two versions as well. So that's pretty much it. So, uh, without further ado, uh, let's get this started. So, let me go ahead and close this laptop. On the front, you have the latch, and then you also have the hard drive caddy. Uh, it uses a 1.8 inch hard drive, and then you also find speakers right here. And then on the left, you'll find the PCM CIA slot, if the camera will actually focus. There you go. And then you have two audio ports, one microphone and one headphone, an SD card reader, one USB 2.0 port, Ethernet modem, and the Kensington lock. And then the back is pretty much nothing but the battery. It is an extended battery. And then on the right, we have the uh, charging port, the DC jack. Then you have VGA. And then right here, uh, you have another USB 2.0 port and a special uh, charging port I think it was uh, it's that small USB shaped uh, port right here so it uses one of the earliest uh, USB shaped uh, chargers but of course uh, it can also use one of these uh, classic ones they use 16 volt and then on the front and then also you have the vent right here and that's pretty much it. And then on the top, you'll find the IBM logo. And then you also have the Bluetooth, battery, and sleep indicators. So that was that right here. And then going to the bottom here, uh, we have the battery. You also have the locking mechanism right here. And then... Here's where you get the access to the RAM and maybe the Wi-Fi card. And then right here is the Windows X Professional Pro key. And it also references uh, the Lenovo here. And here's all the information. This is type 2525. So there you go. And now... Uh, there is a, an additional thing I want to show you as well, and that is the X4 Ultra Base, which is essentially uh, the docking station for any of the X4 series, like the X40 and X41. And on the front, you'll get the power button and the power button lock. And on the left is where you can eject the laptop from uh, the docking station. If the camera will even focus on it. There we go. You got the uh, eject switch and the eject button. And you also have the key lock. And then on the back, you have additional ports that you don't get on the uh, laptop. You have a PS2 port, uh, three USB 2.0 ports. And then you also have modem and Ethernet, parallel, serial, VGA and the uh, power port and then on the right 
you also have another Kensington lock here uh, on this docking station. Uh, so you can actually add security via both the laptop and the actual docking station. And then right here is your optical drive. This is CD or W DVD ROM, your eject switch, and you also have the push button to pull out the optical drive. And then right here is where you also connect the laptop, which should match with the connector on the bottom right here. Try not to show the Windows XP key as well. So there you go. And then the way how it works is uh, I can demonstrate it. Uh, I'm going to have to have uh, two hands for that. But what you do is you first go ahead and plug in the docking station for most people. So I have the charger that I had laying around uh, for another IBM ThinkPad I had. You basically plug it in through the power port. If I can get it to focus, or maybe not. Yeah, there you go. You basically plug it in, and what you do is, uh, you basically, uh, put the ThinkPad in here. I got to make sure that it lines up perfectly. And then you basically push it down like this. You gotta press firmly. And it should fit. So, uh, there you go. Uh, we have uh, a mobile desktop here. So, now let's get to the specs. So, this one has a 1.5 gigahertz Intel Pentium M758. This is a low voltage processor, so it doesn't use that much power. It has a uh, one gigabyte of DDR2 RAM, one that is uh, soldered, that's built onto the motherboard, and a RAM stick, which is basically a 512 megabyte stick. So, so if you actually take out the RAM and there's no RAM in there, it's, it should still work. It has a built-in 512 megabyte uh, chip in there. I think uh, it may have at least uh, 1 or 28 megabytes each or something, uh, but I could be wrong on that. And it has a, a, a 60 gigabyte, 1.8 inch IDE hard drive. Now, for those who don't know about these 1.8 inch drives, they're basically uh, just smaller hard drives. Uh, about this size right here. So... Uh, it may run slower, so this one's running at 4200 RPM and is running Windows XP Professional Service Pack 3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pause the video, so I'll be back. Alright, so let's go ahead and power it on. I'm going to not bother the smoke test thing that I always say. And to access the BIOS, you have to hit F1. And that will get you to the BIOS. If the screen will actually focus, uh, well, the camera will actually focus. So as you can see, it's the Pentium M, 1.5 gigahertz, 1 gig of RAM. So yeah, that's your BIOS right here. Uh, not going to go ahead and go through the whole BIOS thing. Uh, the, the up button does not work, so I'm going to have to hit page up, and that will bring us back to the first option. You got a lot of options that you can go through. Uh, if you want to go through boot options though, you can go ahead and uh, go to startup and then boot and that will give you your boot order. So that's pretty much it. I'm not going to go ahead and go through the BIOS, so let's go ahead and start the uh, computer. As you can see, Windows XP. Oh, and I also uh, did not mention the keyboard too, uh, so I'm going to go through it real quick, and right here you also have the camera focus, uh, Jesus, 
There we go. From left to right, you have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Caps Lock, I think. Oh, wait, it's still booting up, but... Caps Lock, or NumLock, rather. Uh, no, this is NumLock and then Caps Lock. And then you have Hard Drive. There goes the Windows XP startup sound. But anyway, we got the hard drive, uh, power, battery, and sleep indicators. And then right here you have the access IBM button, which when you boot will allow you to uh, boot into the recovery partition. The volume controls, which includes volume up, volume down, and mute. The power button. And then this is the seven row keyboard. You got the track point clicky buttons and the scroll button uh, which can be controlled with the track point and then you also have the Intel and Windows XP stickers and the IBM logo with a ThinkPad reference and as you can see we have just booted into Windows XP so uh, there you go uh, So I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to need one hand to access the thing. Uh, I'm going to right click my computer and hit properties. I'm going to try not to show the name. Uh, yeah, I'm going to try not to show the name here. Uh, so we have Windows X Professional Service Pack 3. And then like I said, uh, IBM Corporation, Pentium M 1.5 gigahertz. It does support physical address extension. Uh, it uses DDR2 4300. So it's running at 266 megahertz. And then uh, if you go to support information, it pretty much tells you all that stuff here. Uh, so there you go. So that is that. Let's go ahead and uh, right click and then hit properties on the desktop because you never know the graphics. Let's go to settings. It's using the Intel 915 graphics. Let's go to advanced and then hit adapter. It's running at 128 megabytes. Uh, like I said, it's the Intel 915 graphics, so there you go. It may also be a 910, as I said here, so yeah, there you go. Now for programs, uh, I'm going to go ahead and go to the control panel. It's pretty much just uh, like a standard IBM copy of Windows XP. Let's go to, uh, where is it, where is it, where is it, where is it? Um, how to remove programs because obviously I'm running Windows XP. Uh, I haven't been running XP for that much uh, as I mostly use Windows 10. As you can see, you got all the IBM stuff Adobe Flash Player, Adobe Reader 7, uh, the Intel graphics, LimeWire. You also have Microsoft Office 2003. You have Skype Beta 4.0, which is kind of interesting. You also have QuickTime, the SoundMax driver for the audio, and you also have, there was also iTunes as well. Uh, here you go, iTunes, all the ThinkPad stuff, including the Think ThinkVantage Productivity Center, Internet Explorer 7, Windows Media Connect, and of course, uh, Windows XP Service Pack 3. So that was pretty much it for uh, the programs uh, that are installed. Let's go and actually run the programs. Let's actually launch the Access IBM uh, app, which can be done by clicking on, by double clicking on the desktop or by pressing the Access IBM button.
here is where you can configure your ThinkPad. So I'm not going to go ahead and go through that. It should also have TPM. It's using TP. I think it's TPM 1.1. I think it's one of the first uh, computers to support TPM. The battery is kind of poor, unfortunately, at that 69%, and that's pretty much how it's gonna be like now. Let's go. To let's go ahead and go to launch the power manager and go to battery information. And as you can see. It's pretty much saying the condition is poor and the battery can only store 31% of its original full charge capacity. That's pretty much expected nowadays since this computer is from 2005. Let's go ahead and run programs like we can go and open up Adobe Reader 7.0. As you can see, uh, Let's go ahead and go to about Adobe or 7.0. As you can see, there you go. If you exit, I just click inside the box. So that's uh, what it comes with. Uh, if you want to access PDF files, you also have SpyBot Search and Destroy, which is basically uh, going to allow you to get rid of like spyware. You also have Symantec Antivirus. Which I'm not gonna go through Symantec. As you can see, uh, we got Spybot Search and Destroy. I never really used that program, but there you go. And then let's go ahead and go to everyone's favorite Office 2003. Let's go ahead and open up Word and type in everyone's favorite. Hello. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight it. I'm going to go ahead and bold it, italicize it, underline it, and then I'm going to also increase the size to 72. Maybe I can go with Arial. There you go. Or, uh, for my channel that I now use at this point, Trebuchet MS, there you go. I believe there's also strike through. You can go and set the font color. Show you more options. I don't think there's a strike through though, but there you go. Everyone's favorite. So let's go ahead and not save the document. There are some other ones too that let's go to the Think Vantage Productivity Center, which basically uh, gives you quick links and your resource center. And you can also see your messages there. I'm not really going to use the program much. You also have uh, lots of programs. Let's go to iTunes. It's going to take a while to open. As you can see, uh, we have iTunes. I'm not going to play the music uh, for copyright reasons, so I'm going to go ahead and close it. And then, uh, what else I can go ahead and... Oh, there's something that went... There's something happening there. But I think it may not happen at any time. Uh, you also have uh, all the IBM stuff that you would get, the Think Bandage. Windows Media Connect, Windows Movie Maker. Let's go ahead and run Internet Explorer. Since there's no Chrome in there. And I should probably go ahead and set the default to the new tab page. So there it goes, running Internet Explorer 7. And you also have PC Doctor, but I'm not going to run that. There was QuickTime 2. So, there's iTunes, here's QuickTime, let's go ahead and run it. And 
There you go, this is QuickTime. As you can see, it's running QuickTime 7.5. Let me check back at iTunes. Uh, for the version, I forgot to check the version. As you can see, it's running iTunes 7.7.0.43. So, there you go. I think that's pretty much all I can show you uh, for any reason. Like, you do have uh, the Think Vanish stuff. Uh, and here's your Think Back configuration, uh, which I can open it up for you guys. And then I can go to Device Manager after that. So, uh, this is where you can configure your ThinkPad. If you go to security information and then security chip, it's currently disabled, but we can enable it in the BIOS. So, that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and uh, run, uh, let's go ahead and go to Device Manager. So I can show you guys uh, all the other specs that we got here. Go to device manager. Now for biometric, it's the touch pit, the touch chip, fingerprint coprocessor, hard drive. It is a Hitachi drive. It's using an IBM a Desk Star. No, IBM Travel Star rather, not a Desk Star, of course. An Intel 915 graphics optical drive is a Mac Sheeta optical drive. And then for infrared, it's the Ivan Think Fast Infrared Port. And then for modem, it's the IBM Integrated 56K modem. For network, it's using the Intel Pro, uh, Pro Wireless 2915ABG and Broadcom Net Extreme Gigabit Ethernet. PCMCA is pretty much a Rico uh, SD a PCMCA driver. A processor Intel Pentium M. SD card reader. I think it's the Rock the Rico driver, I think. So that's pretty much it. And then I can also show you how to actually undock the system. There are there are actually two ways to actually undock the system. Uh, and I and yes, I have confirmed the battery does work. Only it's running poorly. So the way how you undock it is uh there are two ways you can do you go through a start menu and then in windows xp you see you should see an option that says undock computer which will eventually undock the system or what you can do is you can also eject the system by pushing the eject button that's the blue button right there next to that green light you go ahead and push it and it will eventually uh, ask you that it has been ejected so let me demonstrate it it will flash. The screen will also flash as well, and then it'll say "Undock complete." And uh, if you want to remove the system, please do so now. And then you'll also get this warning here. And then you can go ahead and undock the ThinkPad. And then you pull this switch, and it will beep. But I'm not going to go ahead and do that. It's hard to do it one-handed, but yeah. Let me go and try that again and undock it. So it's gonna go and undock the system. Let me go and try that again. And there you go. Let me go ahead and plug it in through uh, the charging port on the side. And there you go. You have actually undocked the system. So that's pretty much a demonstration on how to undock the ThinkPad. So you're actually running as a regular laptop. So that's pretty much it. So I'm going to go ahead and do. So let's go ahead and. Do the conclusion. So in conclusion, uh, is it worth it? 
Mm, probably not nowadays, uh, since it is from 2005, so don't expect to actually uh, do such a thing uh, nowadays. In fact, I, I have actually uh, tested a, a CPU's Z benchmark. The results weren't that great. Uh, 0 0.3 on the, I think it was on the single thread, and 0 0.7 on the multi-thread. So don't even expect playing games, some light games on this. Uh, you can actually play some of the included games that Windows XP has. So uh, I'm so it is kind of nice to actually uh, have a docking station, the which is the X4 docking base. I can even show you there. It's the ThinkPad X4 Ultra Base. So that's that. It is actually kind of nice to have the battery still works, uh, even in 2023, so, yeah, that's pretty much what you can expect on the uh, ThinkPad, just don't expect to browse the internet or such anymore, because, uh, like I said, it's from 2005, and it's way underpowered now for today's standards, at least you can actually still run some of your classic programs like Office 2003, an old version of Adobe Reader, all that good stuff. So, uh, there you go. So, that was it, folks. I'm going to go ahead and uh, end the video. So, thank you guys for watching. Please be sure to hit the subscribe button. Also, follow me on Twitter at RubenOpadisio17. Also, follow me on Instagram, RubenOpTransitFan. And then, for the next one I'm going to do... Uh, I do have another one uh, that I'm going to do a video on, and that is uh, a Dell Latitude E4300. Uh, I have actually finished working on it, so I'm going to go ahead and do a video on it as well. So that was it. I'm going to go ahead and uh, end the video. So this was the IBM ThinkPad X41. If you want to see the tablet version uh, of uh, Ryan Garrett actually has a video on this computer, uh, the tablet version. So I'm going to have a link in the video description if you want to watch the tablet version. It's pretty much identical, but you'll see the buttons on the screen. Uh, so I'll have his uh, video linked in the description. So if you want to watch it, uh, how the differences go, uh, well, feel free to watch his video. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and end the video now. So. I'll see you next time.